Today we have an entitled parent story of blowing up over five dollars. We'll get into that in a bit, but first, Entitled Neighbor trespasses into our backyard for a ball. So, Entitled Neighbor has been giving us trouble ever since she moved into our neighborhood. She threatened to sue us multiple times, claiming that our legally constructed fence was somehow causing water to go into her basement. She never actually sued us. The other times I was on my day off from work and I ordered some Uber Eats. Once my food arrived, I went out to get my food and I noticed Entitled Neighbor's grandson who looked around maybe 10 or 11, pacing around our sidewalk. I didn't think much of it and went back inside. However, afterward, I looked on our Arlo security system app and noticed some new videos. Entitled neighbor rings our doorbell. Dad answers through the doorbell and dad says, Hey, can I help you? The entitled neighbor says, Hey, I was wondering if we could go in the backyard to get our ball. Dad said, No, I can't have anybody going in the backyard. I'm not home. The entitled neighbor says, can we go get it back, or... Dad says no. They say, can we go get the ball? Dad says no, I'm afraid I can't have you going back there. The entitled neighbor says, my grandson can't go get his ball? Dad says no, I don't want anyone going in my backyard. They say, are you serious? Dad says, oh yeah, I'm dead serious. They say, I'll go right back there and open the fence. I think that's what she said, it was hard to understand. Dad said, especially not you. Entitled neighbor, stay the heck out of my yard. You gotta get off our property now. I'll call the police. Neighbor says, you know what? I don't care. I'm calling as well. I'm calling the cops right now. Dad says, oh, do it because I'm not home. The entitled neighbor walking away said, you can't tell us we can't get our stuff. That's stealing. Dad said, no, you put it there. It's mine now. Instead of just waiting for my dad to text me to get the ball for them, She proceeded to unlatch our back gate and go into our backyard after being told she was not allowed back there and walked around our backyard to get her ball. I came out to get my food while she was in the backyard. The reason why dad told her she's not allowed on our property is that she and her husband have gone on our property without permission before and has caused issues for other neighbors as well. We don't feel comfortable with her on our property and we've told her in the past she's not allowed on our property. Obviously my dad should not have said that last part. But after she threatened to sue us for our fence that is on the property line and never apologized, and they often hit your house with their ball, it's kind of hard to be nice to them. Some people may think that dad was in the wrong, but he was going to text me to get it for them anyway, and even then, they could have come back later when my dad was home. Update, I saw some people recommending putting a padlock on the gate. My dad did that on his way home. He bought a combination padlock and put it on the gate. So, would you guys think it would be overly petty if you did call the non-emergency line, reported them, and shared this footage? Especially including the bits where you clearly did not give them permission to go on your property? Is it too much to try to push for charges when somebody clearly violated your rights here? I'd like to know what you guys think down in the comments. Also, hi, I'm Steven, and if you guys can't get enough of hearing about these entitled parents, make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons down below. That said, our next story is, Entitled Stepdad Threatened to Take Me to Court. As you all know, I'm publishing a book about my abuse. Read my other posts for more explanation. But he did inappropriate things to me as a teenager in SA. He was very abusive. I'm writing my book about the abuse I endured and suffered. My mother told him about my book and how it's about him, etc. I haven't talked to him in a very long time. He was cut out of my life a long time ago. I got a message from a weird number. Keep in mind, he's not supposed to message me because I have a protective order against him, and it's for good reason. He messaged me after he changed his number. I had his number blocked. I have a feeling my mother gave him my phone number. The message said, I will take you to court if you publish this book. You will be sorry. If you publish, I will sue you for everything you have. If you publish this, we want a cut of your profits. I saw this message and was like, what the freak? I didn't even respond because of the protective order. I didn't want to break it. What an entitled jerk. Needless to say, OP is absolutely not doing the right thing if they don't report that to the proper authorities. Clearly they violated the protective order, right? So OP needs to do what they can do to make sure that this person is reminded that they can't just go and do that. Our next story is, my family can't accept the reason I'm pulling away from them emotionally. I'm back home from college for the summer. And I finally, finally, at last, got the backbone that I've been lacking a majority of my life. I have some semblance of self-confidence. But the minute I came home, that just gets ripped away from me. 
and suddenly I'm 13 again and I can do nothing but sit and stare at the floor while my parents berate me. I don't even act out or anything. I just go to work, go to my internship, do my online courses, maybe play some Stardew and sleep. I don't even go out or see my friends. Every time I come home, I think if I just stay as invisible as possible, they won't find a reason to yell at me. But nope, they always do, and I'm so sick of it. I'm purposely looking for internships out of state next summer, just so I won't be home for the full three months. Last night, they asked why we don't have a normal relationship while yelling and screaming at me about the usual family disappointment, they wish I was never born, etc. They asked why I can't talk to them, and I just said, I don't know how to talk to you. The minute I said that, all heck breaks loose. My mom starts wailing, saying it's not a good enough reason, my parents say I'm not their daughter, my dad accuses me of having trust issues and thinking that my family's dumb. I try to explain, but they kept cutting me off and interjecting and just invalidated every reason why I don't speak to them that much. To clarify, we do talk. I talk to them daily, but I don't share much with them about when I'm struggling when I'm at university. The real reason is that I don't know what to say to them, because the minute I try to voice how I'm feeling, I just know they'll bring it up later when I'm at my lowest and just use it against me, because they've done it multiple times in the past. For example, I went through a traumatic situation in 2021. That led to me developing an ED and having to go to therapy and they brought it up three times in yesterday's conversation. My dad said it was proof I was screwed up because I needed a shrink. My mom said the experience was more traumatic for her, even though I had to live through it, and for some reason, my trauma and me as a person is the reason their life is crap, even though I don't even live at home anymore. I haven't lived here for almost a year. I don't know how to tell my parents the reason I have trouble speaking to them is because of them. Because every time I try to, they're unable to accept that they might be the reason why. I mean, I think it just comes down to the simple fact that they're deluded, they don't understand, and they're just not capable of understanding. I mean, just the way they treat therapy, they try to put it down as if it's some like nasty black mark on your existence as a person because you needed some help. Our next story is, Self-Entitled Mother Stole Our Table. We were in a restaurant in Tokyo and followed instructions to get a table for lunch. This would consist of getting one of the tags at the door with a number and placing on the table to reserve. We did that and it was a two table joined area. Another lady with a child also occupying a four seater table was staring at me slyly for some reason. I should have realized something was up then. When we were queuing, my husband noticed a woman with a baby pram went to our table and moved a baby chair over. Then she queued behind us. We went back and found our tag was switched. The number was different. We got our food and sat down at our table. Seeing she needed the table badly, I moved one table away from us so she could use it. The lady was furious and got one of the staff to ask us to move. I replied in Japanese, I'm not a native speaker but I know the language to converse. And we said no, we got the table first and booked it the right way. She then came over and scolded us and I replied again in Japanese. Then she spoke to us in English, telling us that she had the right as she had a child, and we should jolly well sit elsewhere. She ignored me and instead directed to my husband in English, making me wonder if she wasn't Japanese, and obviously appealing her situation to a man. Anyhow, my husband said, you could have just asked us nicely instead of switching our tags. She claimed it was empty. We asked for the CCTV to be shown, of which both staff and her paled. My husband felt this was beneath us to argue. She was obviously throwing out the I'm a mother card. We then told her since she wanted it so badly, she could have our table and the food. We left and then we realized since the shop was useless at supporting us, we wanted our money back. So we went back to get a refund. The whole time I interpreted for my husband to get the refund, I saw the lady with the child who swapped our card was staring at us worriedly perhaps wondering if we were going to complain about her. Anyhow, when we got the refund, we walked out and she pretended to feed her child. I just said, hope you're proud of your values to your kids after your self-entitled behavior earlier. I didn't bother to translate. I'm sure she got my meaning. We didn't ask the other lady to clarify. We should have, but my guess at seeing her face, she would have feigned ignorance. My guess, seeing how she threw her card out, it wasn't her first time either. I'm surprised as we've never had the situation in Japan of parental self-entitlement. So I was disappointed as we visited a few times and loved the place. 
It didn't spoil our holidays, but made me now more cautious when going to such places and to sit there while another person orders. I come from a country that has a lesser system than this restaurant in question, and so far if anyone wants a table that seems empty and they have more people, they'll ask politely and usually we'll be okay about it. Now, I don't know if it just comes down to them not wanting to have any kind of personable interaction or whatnot, but 100% they should have just stepped up and asked about it. I mean, really, did they expect you to just take it and accept it because they're a mother? Just because you hooked up with somebody and popped one out doesn't mean that everybody else has to cater to everything you want now. This next story is entitled Mom Complains About $5 for Half an Hour and Blocking the Line. So I work as a host for a restaurant, and yesterday was Father's Day, so it was packed. I worked pretty much the entire day, woke up at 10 a.m. and clocked in at 12 p.m. I sat this family down at around 3 p.m. and didn't think much of it. About half an hour later, complaints were rolling in. The customers were trying to make substitutions with the combo meals, and that wasn't allowed except for certain items. It wasn't for some small combo either, it was worth a hundred plus dollars and she kept trying to squeeze in expensive items to substitute the less expensive ones. When the restaurant emptied out a bit, the manager stopped by at the front desk for a break and a chat. She started to complain about these customers who, one, pretended they didn't get a part of their combo when the busboy, chefs, and waitress could confirm it was made and was sent to their table, two, started holding the check and tip as hostage to fix the order, 3. Returned 40 plus dollars worth of food after a bite because they were too full. I didn't really care too much and just took it as an interesting story because it didn't affect me, but it did leave a horrible impression. After the customers were done with everything, they sent their checks with two coupons. Our company policy around coupons are pretty strict because it would only allow for a single coupon for each table to prevent customers splitting their orders and leaving a coupon in every single one of them. I took the $5 off, printed the receipt and sent it back to the waitress. She comes back saying that the customer was complaining about how the second coupon wasn't used when it clearly said only one coupon for a table in the back. I was pretty grouchy and couldn't be bothered after 4 hours of sleep so I just took off the price for the hush puppies they had and sent the receipt back. Card swiped, money paid, tips, done, customers leave right? If only. A couple minutes later, an old lady stomped back to the front with a poor waitress in tow, demanding to know why the second coupon, which said, When ordering an entree, you can enjoy a complimentary entree for free, up to $10 value, didn't take $10 off their order, but instead took $5.15. Technically, that was an invalid coupon because we didn't have any entrees below $10, and nowhere did it say that it would take $10 off their check. I tried explaining that she didn't order any entrees below $10, so I just took off the hush puppies. She said, but that says $10. I didn't really catch her point and just said, and? So I should get $10 off. No, the coupon gives you a free entree under $10, which you didn't order. She said, hello, can you read? She starts waving her hands in front of my face, lifted the coupon close, underlined $10 with her nails and said, $10, entree, hush puppies aren't entrees. This cycle goes on a couple of times with our voices slowly getting louder before she busts out the, then I want a refund card. I gave up and decided to just give her $10 off. Worst comes to worst, I'll just pay it out of my own pocket. There were customers waiting behind her and I might as well get this over with. Just when I tell her fine, she took the opportunity to taunt with her daughter recording his backup. Hush puppies aren't an entree, they're appetizers. I should be getting $10 off my entree. Can you even read? She had a crap eating smile on her face. Now, there were plenty of cards I could have played here, with the pettiest being the race card, that I realized just now, but I just got angry and decided to argue. I won't lie, some of the stuff I said belonged to a fantasy novel with how cringe some of the lines were. I'm rolling around in bed with embarrassment while typing this. Here's how the convo roughly went. I said, you know what? No, I'm not giving you a discount. She says, I want to see a manager. I said, well, congrats, you're speaking to the manager. I was pulling this out of my butt, and the final answer is no. She says, you're obviously not because I've already spoken to a manager. You shouldn't be working front desk with your attitude. I said good for you, but the final answer is no. 
Our voices had been steadily rising at this point and the actual manager walked in and tried to break us up. Then the funniest thing happened. Her daughter tried to gaslight me and directly lie to the manager and maybe the audience for her TikTok or whatever. We've been polite all this time, but you've been standing here calling us stupid. Matter of fact, I hated this girl more than her presumed mom. She's the textbook example of a gaslighter. And she's probably the inspiration behind Key and Peele's short about the person who always says, awkward, all the way down to that dumb side smirk, and how she makes you feel dumb when you've done nothing but defend your point. She kept gassing up her mom and played the perfect Karen supporting role by trying to find any moral high ground or threats. She even tried to pit the waitress against me using the tip, saying that she might not get a tip because of me. A crisp $5 bill after an hour and a half of listening and adjusting their orders to their complaints, it ended with the manager caving in and giving them the discount, and they left happy and scot-free. I think I should have just held it in a bit better. Now I've got a video of me floating around somewhere acting like a jerk, and I have nothing gained. I felt super frustrated at the manager, but now I understand there was nothing she could do. People need to stop treating food industry workers like slaves. If there's anything I hate, it's the modern go-to being, in any kind of argument, whip your phone out and shove it in their face, and hope that deters them from doing whatever or caves into whatever you're trying to get. I mean, even in the situation when they're clearly wrong, they whip that camera out and try to film some poor person who's just working the front desk, just trying to do their job, trying to blame them as some evil Satan spawn, saying, how dare they cheat us out of our good deal that we scoured for. I love the fact that after all that they go, well then I want a refund. Okay, well let me go get a bag from the back so you can throw up all the food you just ate. You know, make sure you give that back to us. Our next story is, Entitled Mother is Taking Advantage of Me. I, male 30, currently live with my mother, 53, and her husband, 50? My mother's not worked a job in three and a half years, while her husband works full-time seasonally, but gets paid part-time wages due to his employer paying lawyer fees to keep him out of jail some years back. I work full-time plus overtime, 60 hours a week, federal company even. I got this job in 2019. In 2016, I moved into this two-bedroom townhouse with my mother. I was still working part-time, got a full-time job that paid well, $16 an hour plus overtime for a 23-year-old. I was paying half on the rent in the full light bill, $400 plus in Connecticut with old infrastructure, as well as food, her cell phone bill, gassing up her car and buying her cigarettes. I didn't have a car at the time, so she would drive me to the bus stop and ask for gas and cigs as appreciation for her helping me. The job was contracted. I didn't get converted to permanent employee, so a new job came with a small pay cut and full time for this company was 33 hours a week, but I could walk from home. By this point, 2017, my mother had paid off most of her car and was financially good. I began to struggle with the lights and half of the rent due to my pay cut and she made it an entire thing about me choosing to not pay when I'm showing her my bank account to disprove her assumption. Fast forward to late 2018. She starts dating her now husband. Could not be happier to see her getting a life. I get hired at a full-time, well-paying job. She decides she wants to move in with her boyfriend and leave me the townhouse with the furniture as a gift. If I can cover the bills and all on my own, I'm all for it. Mind you, this gift came after she stole the title of my car out of my room and sold it while I was at work to a family member and kept the money. Jumped to August 2019 and I got hired by the post office. Best pay and more hours than I could know what to do with. I'm banking. Living solo, enjoying time to self. Then, March 2020, I get a call that my mother is quitting her job because she's tired of commuting moved two towns over, and she worked in medical and claimed, my job's allowing COVID patients to come in, so she quit to be a stay-at-home wife in 2020. Gave her $200 for her birthday, and she then made that a money thing to ask for, which my idiot self thought it was fine to help. Her half-brained husband tells her it's fine, that he can handle the bills while she takes a break because she deserves it. Whole time, his butt can't afford crap. Think when you sweep a room and brush the dirt under the rug, except the dirt is bills. So who do they call once shut off notices and back due rent from a year ago is due? Call me. 
and since my mother was on the OG lease and we never told the owner she moved, wasn't much I could say. The idea was they move in with the intent to save towards buying a home and leaving me with my own space again. Find out Half Brain's credit score is in the 400s and my mother's not working, couldn't apply for a loan. The plan is then, I'll collect unemployment and save towards a house. She finagled unemployment and her husband job hopped a total of five times since. Whole time, I'm paying a majority on everything, like 70-30 split, because they have to save and I've been covering it myself anyway. Every time I talk about moving or apartment hunting going well, I get threatened with eviction or police calls from my mother. Calls up from the family to tell them I'm sabotaging? I sacrificed my life for you kids and you don't appreciate crap. Could be a t-shirt in this house. She even has the family convinced that she's been working for the last four years. This woman bought a whole computer and has it on the kitchen table to appear like she works from home when people come over. This crap is insane and her husband just supports it like an idiot. I need to get away but I can't properly save for rent or deposit while also paying $1,250 for rent and lights, 70-30 split, along with all my own food, cosmetics, car insurance, cell phone, gas, and random expenses. Just had to replace my alternator two weeks ago and local rent and deposit is $3,000 plus Central Connecticut. All this while my mother sits at home and crap talks me to her husband and anyone who will listen. And she crap talks all of those people, broke bud husband, her words included. I don't want to dislike my mother, but the thought of being taken advantage of her has been at the forefront of my mind for too long now. I can't even exchange pleasantries with this woman without getting bothered lately. Am I being harsh or is this entitled mother BS? OP said in the comments that they're not afraid of going to court with their mother, but they'd rather not go that route, which to me says, I'm not afraid of it, but I'm also kind of afraid of it. Not necessarily because of the outcome, but because of the hassle. Either way, it sounds like this has gone on for way too long, and it's time for OP to put their foot down. Her name is on all of that stuff. She can't keep bullying OP into being submissive and paying for everything for her. She's not the kid here. Our next story is, parents ignore my requests to stop giving me unneeded appointments and continue to let my brother abuse me, as well as berating me for having my own life. Hello everyone, I'm terribly sorry about my absence in the wait. I've recently gotten a new job and I'm working late night shifts. However, the job is rewarding and I get paid well. I'll start off with some good news. Me and my friends are planning on moving in together at a share house and I recently had my first kiss. It felt lovely. I'll start with my therapist. Before I graduated high school, I had to see a therapist due to my mental state constantly deteriorating. This was because I was bullied by nearly every single popular kid for needing help with schoolwork. I was at a point where I wanted to end things over any small inconvenience. I've been seeing her since I graduated and have still been seeing her, even though I don't need any more appointments. I've tried telling my parents this, but they just ignore me. My therapist has started to care more about money than the mental health of her clients and charging exorbitant amounts of money for the children and adults she has appointments with. It's gotten so bad that my mother is fishing out money from her retirement and heritage funds to pay for it. This deeply concerns me, as I don't want her to go broke and I don't want the same thing to happen to any of my family members, and I've been begging them to stop sending me to these. The response I usually get is, but you need them and that they'll help you. The content of the appointments is fairly straightforward, with each of us talking about how our weeks were and our plans for the future. She helped me with strategies in the past when I needed them, but now she's just stealing expensive moments of my life away when I don't even need the appointments. I've tried telling her this as well, but she's ignored me. She charges a cancellation fee for her appointments if cancelled, and I don't know how much it is, which is where the incident last night came in. Me and my boyfriend are seeing Across the Spider-Verse today, and I'd already ordered the tickets. I had an appointment with her booked for tomorrow, but last night, she sent me an email for an appointment today without even giving me any knowledge she was changing it. I was stunned, and I couldn't cancel the tickets. I told her I couldn't attend, and then she charged me the cancellation fee that I'd be paying for the next appointment. I checked my emails just in case I missed anything from her regarding this change, and there wasn't anything. I felt awful as I've heard rumors about cancellation fees and how much they were. She emailed my parents about this as well and they barged into my room and started screaming at me. 
It was apparently my fault that this happened, and their screams and verbal abuse made it even worse. I wanted to cry, but they'd yell at me for that too. They then began to insult my life and insult my friends as well as my boyfriend. They whined about me telling him to reimburse me for the tickets and the support comes first before guilt tripping me. I believe they're trying to look after me, but I just feel concerned. As soon as they left, my brother started to hit objects and make loud, unneeded noises to disturb my hatred for loud noises, knowing it would make me feel worse and more likely to scream into my pillow, which would then give them the favorite child feeling, and my parents would end up yelling at me more. Before all this, I had a difficult day at work. It was very busy and I had to deal with a rude, abusive, entitled customer that believed she was my manager and barked orders at me. She eventually left, but I found it difficult to get past that situation. The only good thing that happened was a little girl trying to say thank you to me after I helped her mother. I was really looking forward to relaxing after work, but I should have known that I couldn't do that either. Later on, I was watching One Piece and playing a Harry Potter game on my Switch when my mother barged in without knocking. I could tell she was going to say goodnight, so I hugged her and said goodnight and to have a nice sleep. She tried to intimidate me with a stare and told me that I need to make better choices and that she canceled my weekly payments from her account before telling me that my account was down 25. After that, I felt tired and wanted to sleep. I'd had enough today, so I tried to say goodnight to my brother. In response, he began thumping his hands against his desk and rudely mimicking me saying shut up, which is what I told him the last time he did that as I mentally couldn't handle this. I eventually gave up and cried in my room falling asleep. This morning it continued. I woke up and began making breakfast when my brother decided to storm into the kitchen and shove me aside as well as the bowl I was pouring milk into causing some to spill over the bench. He teased me for making a mess and the moment I tried to say something he made a shushing noise. He then ordered me to do the dishwasher, even though I kept telling my family that the dishwasher made me feel nauseated, and I tried to tell him this. I was met with another shushing noise at this, and he threatened me that if I kept talking, he'd punch me as hard as he could. I finished making breakfast and sat down, attempting to eat it as fast as I could to escape from the kitchen and from him. I thought he'd stop. But this wasn't the end. He started berating me for enjoying anime and reading manga and that it promoted violence and it was the reason I was violent, apparently. He also judged me for having different likes and dislikes to him. I recently tried telling my family what my kink was and they called it disgusting. I now have to pretend to no longer be into it. He'll start something over something as small as a character in a movie that he doesn't like. For example, I like Penny Parker from the Spider-Verse movies, and he hates her because she's designed as an anime character. He's even told me that I'm not allowed to like child characters because it counts as something disgusting that I won't even mention. I just want this to end, and I'm hopefully moving out soon with my friends. I can't wait to get out of this place and start a new life away from these people. Thanks for reading and I hope you all have a great day. I'm terribly sorry about all this. I think OP should try to be a bit proactive about this. It's a little difficult because the parents are the ones trying to force OP to go to that therapy. You know, maybe if you call that office and say you don't want to attend and you don't want any more appointments, maybe they won't allow them to schedule them, but considering they like that money, they probably will. And you don't really want to put your foot down with these relatives because they'll just apparently make things even worse on you. It might just be a situation where you have to put your head down and continue to grind towards being able to support yourself especially considering nobody seems to want to keep the brother in check and he seems horrendous. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now if you want to hear another crazy entitled parent story, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.